we've got about three inches of snow on the ground so we're not going to be able to uh, do any trucking today or i don't feel like getting the semi out so just open the curtain here we're going to pull the magnum up give it a good servicing this morning or this afternoon i guess now we're going to service it change the oil fuel filters and uh, put the auto steer in it because i'm hoping that later this week when it freezes up a little bit we might be able to get some turkey litter spread. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet, but kind of hoping that we can get some spread. Um, need to call the NRCS office though and make sure that I am allowed to do that. I think you are, as long as you're smart about it and not putting it somewhere it's gonna run off when it thaws out. But I need to ask before I do it, just to be safe. But yeah, we're gonna go from there. up like a champ even being cold well she's a wee bit dirty so we're gonna give her a quick little scrub down with a washcloth and some water because I don't feel like going outside in the snow and washing it um, I might wax it I don't know yet but we're gonna clean it up regardless well, change of plans. Started looking at my service records and uh, this tractor's only got 50 hours on it since I did the last oil change. So it doesn't need the oil changed. So scrap that idea. The Steiger does need it though, but I'm not using the Steiger right now, nor do I need it right now. So that can wait. But what I am gonna do is take this piece of metal here and make a monitor bracket. So in this cab, I've got to have my planter box, I will have my precision planning monitor, and my auto steer monitor, or guidance system monitor, and then on top of that I also need my um, iPad in here this spring when I'm planting. I'm going to run climate through my 2020, so that'll be nice. Um, however, Right now, I am not happy with the monitor mount that I've got in here because it just does that. And it's it's okay, it, it kinda works, but I like to do something a little bit better, a little more substantial. So uh, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build something in here. Um, I'm gonna make sure that we're not gonna go into any wires, but I don't think that we are. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're doing. We're going to build a bracket. Now remember when you're doing projects like this, to cut twice and measure once. At least that's usually how I do it. Anyhow, we're going to let it rip. <laughs> Good to me. 52 inches. Time to put her in the cab. At least this is our first bracket. Now these things, you can find these monitor brackets for a 7140 or these boxcar magnums, but they want like $250 for a piece of metal that has some holes drilled in it to put monitors on. I can do this for like 20 bucks. Just take a piece of metal and mount it in the cab and drill holes in it where you need holes in it. That's not rocket surgery. It's a little ridiculous to spend 250 bucks on a monitor bracket. And I hit the window. Well, have to run a quick errand and it's really snowing and gotten slick. So there's only one thing to do. Traction control off. Oh yeah, that's the fun stuff. Nobody's on the road, so you can play around and do stuff like that. I love driving in the snow. Some people are terrified of it. I think it's really fun. Drift corners and do all kinds of fun stuff.
here's what we've accomplished. I put a radio in the tractor. Um, the radio has been crapping out on this thing for some time. Um, obviously, I had to make my own harness. So it's, it's not pretty, but it works. Um, it's got sound. I am gonna get, I'm getting ready to replace the speakers in here too. Um, I've got these out. Got the top of the cab popped off right now and then realized that I didn't need to do that. I can get to the speakers from here. So that was kind of a whoops on my, my part, but I did get my bar put in here. So that's good. Um, got my planter box mount for folding the planter, row shut off, stuff like that. Got my precision monitor in here. Uh, the 2020 monitor, it is working. And the last but not least, I'll just turn the camera around for this one. Last but not least, we have our auto steer in. Um, basically, that wheel just turns the steering wheel. It's pretty much as simple as that. Now, this cab is a train wreck now because I have all of my stuff laying here, there, and everywhere, and cables everywhere. So... I'm trying to tidy that up right now, but just test firing everything, making sure everything works and uh, getting it mounted where I want it. And then I'll run the cables and make everything nice and neat um, after I get that done. Now, I do need a cable to go from this 250 monitor to that box right here. Um, I thought I had all the right cables. Turns out I don't, so... Um, this is going to be pretty awesome. It is so much better. So much better than uh, the Kenzie monitor that I had. Um, so far, I really, really like it. Um, obviously, I've not really done anything with it, not even hooked it to the planter, but uh, it is pretty awesome. So, um, I do think that I'm going to like this a lot more. I can do a lot more with the planner. I can also add a lot of things to the planner having this. Uh, I'm not going to go crazy on the precision stuff, but there is a few things that I would like to do. But it's kind of fun playing around with it. I'm still kind of learning, but uh, yeah, I think I'm going to like it. So, auto steer, precision monitor. Uh, getting my monitors mounted here. I am going to put my uh, Midland radio in here. Um, I'm not sponsored by them or anything like that, but I will say that I really like their stuff. Um, so I bought a few things from them. Um, really don't have any complaints about it. Um, so we'll get these new speakers put in. We'll tidy this up. And uh, it is kind of a neat looking radio. It's kind of retro looking. That's why I bought it. But I was really hoping that the wiring harness would match up what the Magnum had, but it didn't. So I just peeled this back enough that I could look at the wiring diagram and matched it up with the old one. And nothing's on fire yet, so I think I did it right. I don't know. We'll tell. Uh, time will tell, I guess. But uh, that's what I'm doing. I got the cable ordered for this, so we should have auto steer next time I go to run this thing. Well, good morning everybody. We got some snow, it's mostly melted off now. We got, I don't know, two or three inches, nothing too bad. But it was really windy, so it was drifting in places, but really nothing too major. Um, not enough to even break the greater blade out for, so this morning we're taking care of cows. We've got our uh, feed buckets in here and grab them a bale of hay to go back. Now I'm attempting to get all of them caught right now because we are selling out and getting rid of cows all, all together. Um, I have thought about keeping just a few of them around, but it's really not worth it. And I don't know. I thought about fencing off just a little area down in here to keep some cattle, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, I really hate to get rid of them, but we don't really have enough that they're worth um, taking care of. They get really time consuming sometimes in the summer when we're cutting hay and everything else. 
uh, what I need to be spraying and things like that. Um, row cropping makes a lot more money than what the cattle do and they're kind of just a hobby anymore. They've been just a hobby for the last several years, but the row crop operations kind of get into the size where I'm going to have to downsize on that hobby a little bit. So uh, I am planning on kind of downsizing. I'm probably just going to get out of them all together, but I don't know. I may stick in it just for, just for fun. I don't know, but we'll see. All right, well, I think I've just about got the tractor cap set up and ready for the planter. Uh, I'll give you guys a little tour of everything I've done so far. So first and foremost, the most important thing is I replaced the radio. Um, it's a Bluetooth radio and I put new speakers in here. That one was blown and rattling and making all kinds of commotion and this one was hit or miss. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't. Had a bad connection somewhere. Now they work great, so I have radio in here now, which is nice, and I can listen to what I want to listen to and not just the radio all the time, because when you're planting, you get sick of the same five stations playing the same five songs. So, now I got that. Then I put my iPad in here. I'll be running climate through this. It'll show me my different populations. Um, it'll map the field as I'm planting, so that'll be nice. You can kind of see here where I've had a test plot before. Um, I had a bean plot right there, but basically next year, this 99 acres, this field and this field are going in corn, this L-shaped field and this field are going in beans, you go up the highway, this whole farm is going in corn, and so on and so forth, but uh, we are right here at the farm right now. So we're sitting here in the shop. Uh, I got my auto steer put in, um, which basically it just runs off a wheel here. I have it disconnected right now. Um, I'll kind of show you guys. It's hard to do this one handed. Basically that rubs on the steering wheel. I just got it tucked out of the way right now. Have my planter box. All this does is controls my markers right or left. And it's basically how I fold the planter. And then my point rows left or right, it kicks on and off half of the planter. Um, that way if I'm like, for example, if I'm planting right here and I've already planted my end rows, I can kick six rows out and plant six rows over here, kick six rows out over there. Just keeps me from overlapping. Eventually, and this is part of the reason I got this 2020, I would like to put row clutches in, but just not really in the budget. I bought too much stuff this year, so. I can do that down the road, or I may, hell, I don't know, I might trade planters down the road. So I really hate to put a bunch of money into an older planter um, because that's money that you'd never get back out of it. So I don't know, it's a good planter. I can get several more years out of it. And if nothing else, I'm just gonna make it a bean planter down the road and get a 16 row corn planter. But really I'm getting by fine with what I've got right now. And it did a really good job planting last year. Uh, I just am gonna upgrade some minor things on it, hit or miss, little stuff, but uh, yeah, that's, this is what the cab looks like. Um, it's pretty teched up, I guess. I'm not really used to this. I am used to that crappy Kinsey monitor right there that if you guys watch the videos long enough, you know that I absolutely hated that thing last spring. Um, so. I've gone from just running that black box to running all of this. Um, and I'm hoping, and I'm not quite sure, I think I have to replace the sensors in the combine, the yield sensors, but I would like to have climate in the combine with me this fall as well. Um, basically, so if I plant two different hybrids in one field, I can be able to figure out exactly where they're at and what they yield. I can look at yield data, overlay it with um, soil sample maps, yield maps for uh, my VRT, which my is basically variable rate. Well, it is variable rate. Uh, my variable rate fertilizer that I'm putting down uh, individually for DAP and potash. Um, pretty much my nitrogen's, for the most part, going to be straight rated. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of what we're doing. It's pretty neat, I think. Um, I do 
think that there, there is such thing as too much data, but just this basic, what I'm going to do, I think I can make some better agronomic decisions uh, based on seeing what's actually going on and not just guessing. Um, I can kind of see where my good spots and my bad spots are, what I can improve on, what hybrids do best on certain ground. Um, I'm just going to like this to kind of compare some things at the end of the year. But uh, 2020, I got a lot of potential there. That is a Gen 2 monitor. Um, and then this Easy Guide 250, it's nothing fancy, but having auto steer will be very nice to plant with. So this is what I got and I am pretty excited to play with it. Might have to plant some more March soybeans this year, who knows. Well, we spent most of the morning at uh, the bank and the accountants, so paying off operating loans and getting my taxes done. Got them buttoned up for the most part, so that's good, but this afternoon I decided it was nice enough we'd make a trip down to ADM, so few more loads of beans and we'll be done coming down here unless I decide to haul corn here too which is kind of a strong possibility right now because I think they're paying like 572 today for corn so can't really beat that um, they're about 35 cents higher than down around home so it is worth the trucking to bring it down here but not by a lot so I don't know what I'll decide to do there. It really depends on how many appointments I can get in Washington. But uh, I am looking at a couple extra thousand dollars to haul it down here after the trucking cost. So I don't know. I might do that. But I'm also starting to get in the time crunch because I've got a lot of equipment that needs to get ready before spring. So there's that too. And I got to factor in my time to this as well. So. Is my time worth a couple thousand dollars? Probably. But, uh, I don't know. I gotta get on some things, because I feel like I'm way behind where I should be, because I still have to strip that planter down to the frame and pretty much completely rebuild it. So, spring's right around the corner. Plenty to do between now and then. <laughs> 